I was getting the 760s and 780s even on the mocks. But oh, the mocks were so. So after going through the course, the mock scores had jumped, but the actual attempt was, it was still 710. Okay. Exactly. The only problem was what was happening in that exam hall, which is what I realized because if four to five to six mocks were giving you 750 plus scores, it shouldn't have happened there. That's what you had said as well. Once I got the 760, even then I was thinking of T15s at best. Spoke to my consultant, and she said this is the right time to try a Kellogg. Who's who's the and consultant? Her name is Mansi Diwan. Uh, you might oh. not find her much online, but she. No, no, I I know Mansi. She's from Delhi. Yeah, I I met her a few yes. times. Yes. Yes. Um, a yes. couple of our other students have gone to her. Yes. The first was. me finding ways through which i can elevate my profile a little further it could be simple things like doing a change management maybe a project at bcg right it. and maybe some other changes that i would have made but all these changes that i was making was targeting to one clear theory which was me wanting to make some sort of a contribution at both right so i would say that i can contribute in xyz class because i have learned these three aspects which are new into my profile first one now i see the value of what you can actually achieve in 24 hours in a day uh the value of time is a little bit more in my life right now mm-hmm. so i'm having this chat with you right now and i'm going to pursue eight other tasks versus lazing in my bed which is what i was doing on every weekend <laughs> before i did my mba and it's a very small thing i know mm-hmm. it's not something that i push myself to do anymore but it adds up it's, it's a small thing on that day but it adds up over a period of time The first was, and this is something which my manager used to keep saying: start building relations beyond transactional aspects, and that really helped because I was working with the same people. I just said this, right? Work with the same people, mm-hmm. you know what they expect, and you get their work a little quicker mm-hmm. than someone else does, and that really helps, right? Um, and then the you, second, you make thing, everyone better, right? You're making everyone absolutely, better. Absolutely, absolutely okay. makes lives easier. That's leadership. That's, yeah, mm-hmm. and that's something I learned quite a bit from my managers as well. So, so welcome, Shubham, to um, this one-on-one. I won't, I won't call this a debriefing session, but but I I kind of want to call this a career transformation journey so far, and it's still you know a journey in the making. So, um, and 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 first of all, congratulations on um, on getting the offer at BCG, uh, phenomenal offer. So today we want to talk about just three things: it's just decisions, decisions, decisions uh, during your life. Very briefly about the GMAT decision. then we will talk about uh, how you approach admissions and the and and the admits that you uh, that you receive and how you chose booth then we will talk so that's kind of where i want to spend about 20 25% total of our time and then we'll talk about the first year approach to internship and what did you do during internship to get this offer okay so let's kind of get started so so let's talk about that 760 on the gmat you that you got with us prior to that you uh, you indicated you had taken the test a few at least once before if not a few times so tell me what was that experience and how did you choose eg mat and then how did you get to that 760 what were the key decisions you took there well unfortunately i had to take that exam four times before the 760 so <laughs> i think mm-hmm. i exhausted the number of attempts within one year which you were allowed to take at least back then um yeah, now was, now it's I, about five yeah yes exactly um started off with with about 680 if i remember mm-hmm. the month of august 2021 one month later wrote it again got a 680 one more time despite the preparation mm-hmm. uh, and that's where i decided i think i need to jump on to a more comprehensive test prep strategy and that's where i came into eg mat um but okay you choose the right test platform a uh, test prep platform but if you don't do it the right way it will not go well which is why after just taking the scholaronium if that's what it was called yes i took 660 despite all the prep uh mm-hmm. came back one more time this time realized that i need to start from scratch so i went through all the modules went through all those learning modules so you went through the courses then yes yes that's where i restarted everything from scratch uh in depth as much as i could go and then got a 710 after a couple of months mm-hmm. um and that's where i think i decided that i needed to just change or maybe fine tune one or two strategies because I was getting the 760s and 780s even on the mocks. But the mocks were so. So after going through the course, the mock scores had jumped, but the actual attempt it was still 710. Okay. Exactly. 
the only problem was what was happening in that exam hall, which is what I realized because if four to five to six mocks were giving you mm -hmm. 750 plus course, it shouldn't have happened there. That's what that's you had true. said as well. Um, and that's where I think, you know, one of those sessions which you were taking, uh, kudos to that, because during that, you mentioned that a lot of us, while taking the exam, go into this habit of sitting for 10, 15 minutes on one question sometimes, just thinking because just thinking that it's a really difficult question and then just jumping across choices. Mm -hmm. um, there was a point within that 760 attempt where the same problem came into place, uh, mm -hmm. but I just decided to mark and move on. And I think I kept doing that again and again. Listen, these are all obvious advices, but it's nice to rehear it one more time and actually, I know, I know. It, you know, so kudos to that between my 710 and 760 attempt, it was just about 10 to 12 days or 15 days of gap, the minimum gap that's actually required. And there were just very, very tiny strategical fixes that I had to make to actually get to the 760. So that was a journey. Um, I, I think I want to just, I want to just ask us, so, you know, you had four attempts, 630, 630, 660, right? And you are not an IATM. Absolutely right? not. So, <laughs> so what, so why were you fixated at that 760 and what kept you going to really say, I, I got to do better? Honestly, I was not even fixated on 760. I was very, very happy if I would have had a 710 or a 700. Even but you, you still attempted after that yes. 710, right? Exactly. So you were fixated on something. Yes. And the reason that happened was because when I was taking these meaning-based approaches for sentence correction or this critical thinking approach for CRs, etc. Yeah. The score... Really thinking approach, yeah. Yes, the score started really elevating quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And that's where I saw that it's possible. You know, if you ask me to become an Olympic swimmer in 10 years, I'll say, no, it's not happening in yep. this life. <laughs> but 760 started looking a little possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what just motivated me to kind of keep going. Um, so kudos to a lot of things that I saw from the module, um, learned from the module. And once again, you know, there was a huge gap between my mock at that 660 attempt and then the 780, which I was getting in the mocks. But during that gap, it was all about learning those strategies and then just suddenly seeing the score elevate quite a bit. Okay. That's, that's good to know. So but when, when you said you were, you would have been happy with that 710 as well. Yes. Okay. Which schools were you targeting then? And when you got that 760, how did that mindset change? I would say anything beyond the T15s, because realistically, mm -hmm. as an overrepresented minority, that's the only. So, so when you had that 710, you said, okay, yes. A T15 to T30 is what you were looking for. Exactly. So then you had that 760, then what happened? I mean, again, in the 710 bracket, there was the ISPs, T15s, etc. Mm -hmm. Even when I got the 760, I did not think that M7s was something that's even realistically possible for me because there's nothing stellar in my background as per me. Um, but then this is where a lot of things change after just the GMAT score, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's why I had set this in my email as well, that mm -hmm. the GMAT score was a pivotal step in terms of because you think about these things. Yes, exactly. I did not think about this at all. Uh, and once I got the 760, even then I was thinking of T15s at best, spoke to my consultant and she said, this is the right time to try a Kellogg. Who's, who's the and consultant? Her name is Mansi Divan. Uh, you might oh! not find her as much online, but she's- No, no, I, I know Mansi. She's from Delhi. Yeah, I, I met her a few yes. times. Yes. Um, a yes. couple of our other students have gone to her. Yes. So Mansi and Nupur Absolutely. are both from Delhi and, 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 and they both, I think the, the, in terms of the, they live in close proximity. I'm from Delhi as well. So yes. that's why I know her. So, um, so, so yeah. Okay. That's good. Yeah. I've heard really good things about Mansi. Um, in fact, uh, 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 one of my very close friends has, uh, taken, uh, who's, who's currently just graduated from Tuck. He, he took her help as well. So, She's absolutely fantastic. I think for, for, for some of us with these consulting goals in particular mm -hmm. she's really really good and that's something that someone else recommended to me as well and you know i saw your post about three four hours ago where you were telling yes. how to choose a consultant and be a consultant and yes, yes. those are exactly the pointers <laughs> i would yeah, recommend. i i made me think because i've been just getting this question on emails again yes. and again and again how to do it and I'm like god let me just sit down so my first thing was I, I actually went to Claude and said, how would you choose an MBA consultant? It gave me a bunch of things. I said, no, yep. I wouldn't do it. That doesn't apply to me. It shouldn't apply to my students. So I gave it eight pointers. I said, this is how I would do it. Can you just elaborate on that? And then it said, it wrote a, a, a nice article. So the article is <laughs> still not published, but I said, yeah. okay, let me at least put it on LinkedIn, tag people so that they can add to it. So Absolutely. other consultants can add to it. 
you know, you should add to it as to what you did, because that way it gets enriched with everyone's experiences. Yes. And and then I can write an article and everyone would benefit from it. A hundred percent agreed. And I love the comprehensibility of that. I, I get a lot of questions on this as to why we need an MBA consultant even now when we have chat GPT. And that's why what we point us on 70% of the job is to actually help you get the content and that 15 to 30% is actually editing. That's what yeah. chat GPT might be helpful That's for. That's where chat GPT would be helpful. Bit of it, right? So you still need them essentially. Yeah. And I have seen it, the ones who are not using them, there is a gap between what we had produced back then and what they are doing right now. So you might probably still need them. Yeah, no, it is, it is, it is. So so this is good. We're done with the GMAT. I want to just talk about a couple of other things um, there. So I, I kind of went through your LinkedIn profile you are from RV College of Engineering. You are a communications background, ECE, right? Is that is that a fair? So, um, so I'm an ECE background as well from from my BTEC. Um, what is a subsystem lead that you were in your first job? Oh, that's a good question. It's well, the best part is it it wasn't even a job. This was a sort of a club that we were starting back then, uh, and the primary reason was. We don't have avenues in our engineering colleges mm -hmm. beyond automobile for some reason. And so we mm -hmm. thought, let's let's find these various reasons to actually create something. And we thought space tech might be a great idea, right? Okay. And so we started collaborating with ISRO back then. And this was really a shining pointer in my resume quite for, for a long, long time before BCG came in. Mm -hmm. um, and that was that was a basic idea about it. it. It wasn't a job. My first actual job was BCG itself, uh, which I was recruited. But this is something you created so you could get to BCG. Yes, in some way. Uh, so you you in you build this and say let's kind of build this thing over here, collaborate with this row that will give me good talking points and 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 that got you the junior data analyst position. That's right. That's right. There was nothing in the resume before that to actually shine through, and it really helped beyond just the BCG aspect of it. It really helped shine my professional skills a little bit more mm -hmm. because we never ever interacted with people. We were thinking about tech all the time, and I wanted to move beyond it. And these things just helped quite a bit. Got it. So then at BCG, you were about what, what four and a half years or so, right? Four and a half, five-ish years. You went, you had two promotions. So you started as a junior data analyst. You became a data analyst and a senior data analyst. So tell me, I mean, it seems to be data analyst to me, but what's the difference between a junior, a regular data analyst and a senior? And then how did you make those transitions? I think one thing that changes is you were at managing people and you are managing people over time. Um, the biggest differentiator just beyond this was that you start working with the same set of people. Mm -hmm. They want to work back with you once again. Mm -hmm. And so you know exactly what they want. Uh, you know exactly what the client wants as well. And it kind of eases so you. The client interaction also increases as the more senior you go. Okay. Absolutely. The higher you go up. Yes. Absolutely. So those are the key differentiators, but beyond that, you are hundred percent right. Um, it's just the the kind of work that you do and the volume. It's, it's of not, it's, 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 it's actually a very big distinction because you, so, so then the big question is why is it that you, I mean, I'm sure everyone who joined as a junior data analyst was not promoted to a senior data analyst in that time span. How did you ensure that you were a, and then B did this, was this MBA always in your mind on your mind that way? Second question first. Yes, an MBA was in mind, especially because BCG at least really recommends it. If not recommends it, warns people who are coming from an MBA background because it gives you certain skills, which I think I've started to respect a little more now. Um, the first bit on the promotion aspect, I, I do agree. It's not as if it's that quick for everyone, but there were two things that I meaningfully tried to do. Mm -hmm. The first was and this is something which my manager used to keep saying, start building relations beyond transactional aspects. And that really helped because I was working with the same people. I just said this, right? Work with the same people, mm -hmm. you know what they expect and you get their work a little quicker mm -hmm. than someone else does. And that really helps, right? Um, and then the you, second- You make thing, everyone better, right? You're making everyone absolutely, better. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Makes lives easier. That's leadership. That's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's something I learned quite a bit from my managers as well. And the second thing was, Something which my manager again used to keep saying that when you're starting off, at least for the first time, just put in everything. Just show that you are the person who is accountable for all your world. And that really helps imbibe a lot more trust. And if you get that through, you get a better feedback. So, <laughs> so, so, so but, but, but let's kind of go back. So you, yeah. you said accountability. I mean, I want to just kind of hold on to that word there. 
give me a couple of instances when you said i am accountable for this and you you think that made the difference in terms of your career progression yeah i mean i can give simple examples two let me share these with you the first one was my partner asked me to reach out to somebody and ask for some information i reached out to that person that person said it's not available right now mm mm-hmm. the simplest thing for me to do was go to my manager or the partner and say hey this is not available versus go a step deeper and ask him okay what is available get mm-hmm. that information maybe rephrase that output a little bit and then give it out a little further so that's one part of accountability you own your piece mm-hmm. right and then the second part is if the work you, you you get back something at least that's useful yes, exactly okay. you cannot go back this is, and... sorry this is i this i spent is... all that time got nothing you kind of figure out how to do that job again absolutely and yeah. then the second piece of accountability is not really accountability but the way you do it mm-hmm. simple things like this communicating my partner doesn't sit in india he's sitting in the polish office the poland office mm-hmm. i need to ensure that i tell him in the morning these are the three things that i'm doing right these are the two areas i need your intervention by 1 pm eastern time mm-hmm. right and by by the night this is what i'm going to produce to you these are the risks that i see in today's work this ensures that he knows exactly what i'm doing and that's where i think accountability kind of drives forward through as well um especially on the intervention piece it really helped him and me just elevate our our working culture a lot better it also focuses us channelizes his, his effort you kind of as a team your output is is much better right then absolutely not just that i mean i would tell him very specifically these are the meetings with the clients and i need you on mm-hmm. right and he really appreciated that because he hadn't seen this coming through from an analyst side but this aspect got imbibed once again because the managers who gave me these recommendations and i did follow them and, and this in many ways is also leadership you know yeah. you were managing people but it's leadership so so i i i i kind of also briefly very very briefly i want to do this because i know this is not a part of our agenda but but you had all of these accomplishments you, you you've had these promotions then you did the gmart you had that 760 then you went to mansi so what value did mansi add uh in terms of your application because you got all of these phenomenal admits uh, you know i'm going to say those again kellogg booth tuck um ross anderson am i missing something and booth uh oh as a kellogg booth booth okay there you go yeah. all of them you can yes. do it all okay so what value did she add that that you got all of these admits I mean, the only places you did not get in were harvard i think or or stanford which were there were two that you didn't get in right The only one I tried and then get through was water. Unfortunately, water. Yes, sorry. You covered these all. Yes. I mean, there are a lot of these. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> like, so, 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 what value did she add? Let's kind of come back to that question. Because I mean, that's the same question. You are a smart guy, right? If you think about it, great GMAT score, smart guy is working at BCG. You hired a consultant. And again, being a consultant, you kind of know the value that a consultant adds. But just to be very specific, where did she help? and i'm thinking of how to structure this and i would say two things first one was literally the structure of the way i'm putting things across mm-hmm. right and the second thing is identifying relevant stories that i need to put there let Because me you just... had many of course there are a lot right you've had 20 year 28 years of experience and there were certain essays for example i think the kellogg essay was one of the toughest ones that i had to write there was one one essay on values and whenever there is a question posed about values i'm kind of lost because i don't know a what are the relevant values which that school i mean which which matter for that school and whether i am the right person there or not and this is where mansi helped pick out things from my life expand those a little bit better than i could ever do because the very first draft that i created on that essay she said let's get on a call and i thought she's going to pat my back and then she comes in and says what on earth have you created <laughs> so there was a huge gap and this is where it helps to have a consultant because they know exactly what goes into for each school and put that together which is that first part the structure bit together okay i want to just ask another thing about mansi this is something that i've heard from a couple of other students and I, and where they've said hey mansi is someone who you can talk to even about your girlfriend if you've had a breakup she is the person you go and open your heart up to is that true about her i mean i, I don't know if you had that but is that is she that comfortable a person talking to is what i'm saying i mean i, I still talk to her about these things so you are 100% right about that okay. um, the good and bad part both was that she was available at 2am in the night 
as well. I say that bad because it's really bad for her. It's bad for her. <laughs> it yes. really worked really well for me. Yes, yes. And most of my other my other batchmates. There was one thing. See, I was always trying a hass before I actually did did both, and I did not have the TOEFL or the IELTS score on time. Uh, and I reached out to Mansi saying I might not do a hass. And three days before the booth application, she says, "Do you want to do a booth?" And I said, "It's not going to happen." And she said, "Let's make it happen then." And it wow. actually did, right? That's what I meant by flexibility—not just those two AMs, but she's really flexible in helping you realize and refurbish some of the things that you have to kind of ensure that you actually get to the best place possible. Perfect. Got it. Yes. Thank you. So let's now kind of, and, and I think just to summarize this, so. Sh- Honestly, there are things that you can do, but when you have someone who's giving you a framework to to kind of approach yes. these applications, then you are able to put in your best because it's still you who's doing the effort. But that framework truly channelizes your energy. That's right. That's that's I think seventy to eighty percent of it. The other twenty percent is making sure that you don't mess up at one or other places. So there's that checklist that comes in, yes. which I think is also critical. All and right, I so like you... the first point you said, by the way, Rajat. The very first point channelizes your energy because. Mm-hmm. If not for that, I would never have finished yes. this in the first round for sure. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, it's basically, you know, you can really cut an apple with a knife and it'll be nice and straight. Or you can really just chop it up with your hand. <laughs> it's just the same effort. The yes. output's going to be very different. And um, yeah, uh, one would be messy. The other would be a beautiful carved out apple that, that you can, you'd love to eat. So you have Anderson, Booth, Kellogg, Tuck. And uh, and then this is the fifth one. Darden, and I think that's it. Okay. Um. No, no, Ross. Yes. So forty k I... Ross, one twenty k Anderson. In your email, they weren't even the cons- in the consideration pool. Then it came to Kellogg versus Booth. You were. It seems you were fighting between Kellogg and Booth, and that one twenty k wasn't valuable as valuable to you. I'm sure it's valuable to everyone. It so is. so walk me through that thought process. In any regular year, mm. I think I would have taken a one twenty k for sure. Mm. My seniors from Ross and other schools mm. had told very clearly that it's very difficult to get recruited, at least in twenty four, twenty three, etc. And that's where I had to change a lot of things. Getting a job was a very critical thing because without it, I was coming back to India <laughs> with a debt, which would have been even more fun. But yes, um, that was one of the one prime consideration. The other aspect was. I want to just drill down on that one over there. Yes. So you talk to your seniors at each of these schools. Yes. And and you found Booth's placement was Booth and Kellogg had the best placement amongst these. Is is that what I'm inferring from all of this? For my goal? Yes. yes. When you say your goal, what does that mean? It was coming back to consulting. So coming consulting. back to consulting in, in the Absolutely. context of consulting, this is where it was important. Got it. Yes. Not in the other context, and that's a very important piece there. Yes. So that else... was a very short term thinking. I'm so sorry to cut you off, Rajat. That was that was a very short term thinking. I I also agree. But the second aspect, and this is where which this is a value that I started seeing when I came in here, is that once you are in these specific schools, there are certain opportunities that they provide, which may be. the others do not um simple things like entrepreneurship for instance you know your access to gateways that you probably might not have had mm-hmm. how you utilize it is completely different oh, yeah. but accessibility itself is a little bit easier at some of these schools give me an example okay um okay let's let's start with the consulting example itself um for the m7s or maybe even the the top 10 schools mm-hmm. i know that most of the consulting companies will come to the school on campus across all offices right so we would have riley taram for instance which is one of the smaller offices at bcg mm-hmm. um and we would have a new york office as well maybe for some of the other schools um some of my other friends who were there bcg would come in for one particular office and for some of the other schools as well beyond the t20s bcg would just encourage you to apply directly without putting you through this organic coffee chat networking process yes. so that's the first bit and there's great. a reason for that right because if you're bcg you don't want to say mckinsey got more people from the top 10 and we actually got more people from rank 15 to rank 30 or you don't want that you want to actually have maintain that position so top 10 is the first place he would go to when he want to recruit people 
I, I hope that's not true, <laughs> but yes, maybe. Well, I mean, maybe. if you're a BCG, you're you're really thinking of that, right? Because one of your selling things is it's in your selling services. It's also about the, it's also about who you have as consultants there. Yeah. And, and yes, you would see that in pure numerics itself. Yeah. If you just open their, yeah. their school portfolio, you would see a lot more students from certain specific schools. And that's where the first part of it, you know, short and the term. the top 10 also, yeah. or top four or top five also are larger class sizes. So you can, the, for, you get a greater bang for your buck for every yeah. visit that you're making there. Yes. I mean, Booth is what, seven, 800 people. Kellogg's very similar. Um, yes. Howard's and, and Wharton are about a thousand there. So, 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 so for every visit that they make, they get a lot more return out there. That's right. So, okay. And I think on the other bit, which is just beyond the consulting aspect, there are certain classes. I'll give you an example, an entrepreneurship class that I was taking very recently. Mm. Professor is a millionaire slash billionaire, right? Mm. And I'm sure there are professors in the other schools as well. I'm sitting with students who have completed their tenure at BCG, McKinsey, Baines, et cetera, mm. and other consulting or investment banking firms ha are coming there probably to elevate their career into entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. What the professor is teaching me is probably not as important as the 60 odd students with whom I'm taking a class right now, who are probably future entrepreneurs, maybe an accessibility that I might not have in some of the other schools, because maybe the way the other schools are creating their applicant pool is more catered towards consulting and IB and not these areas such as private equity or venture capitalists, which is where I thought Booth was really shining, at least among the schools that no, I That's had. true. That that part's true. I mean, so so again, it's again the focus. So, I mean, for example, for someone with the focus on tech, Anderson will provide wonderful gateway. A hundred percent. Yes. Right, right. They have those great professors out there who are those millionaire billionaires as well. So it's not that Anderson doesn't have that. But again, oh, yes. Booth's focus um, on, 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 on private equity and venture capital. And just the the kind of work that they do, just stemming from that econ piece, the location in Chicago, um, I think that that's there. And and Booth also has a phenomenal campus. So does Kellogg, by the way. So yeah, that's visit Booth. But yes, you summarize this really well. It's all coming down to what you want out of this. It's all yes. <laughs> it was the right school for you. Yes, exactly. So between Kellogg and Booth, now that we've kind of narrowed it down to between Kellogg and Booth you know, you were tempted. Why was Kellogg attractive? Why was Booth attractive? And how did you kind of gravitate towards Booth? I mean, Kellogg was attractive because that's the that's the school I got in the first round. Um, got that back in December, was all but heading there, mm. at least until June. And that's where Booth came in in the third round. Mm. Got these oh, it, was, it was round three? Yes, I got this. All the round. other admits are round three? All the other admits were round one, um, except Booth. Booth was something I applied in the first round, waitlisted in round one, waitlisted in round two, got this in round three. And between... And, yeah. yeah. No, go ahead. Sorry. So Kellogg versus Booth. I was just covering one more piece. I think even between the first and the third round, I was consistently sending emails to Booth. So yeah, I, 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 I want to come, come on that. So we will... I want to spend two to three minutes on that. But let's do Kellogg versus Booth and then do that. That's a very tough question. <laughs> I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> no, I know that. <laughs> and listen, anyone would say they are the same and I would see very closely why. But once again, I'll come to two reasons. The first one, short term thinking again, consulting. I knew personally that a lot of students at Kellogg were either heading to consulting or tech. Tech mm -hmm. was a slight bust. So those tech students were coming into consulting as well, which means that your denominator in terms of the pool that you're competing, is that the right word, with, is really high. You're talking about... You're competing with more students there. Yes, essentially. Mm -hmm. Versus at Booth, I, they, they don't like using the word, but it's still a bit of a finance school, right? There yeah. is a finance prodigy that goes there. Um, so 40 or 50% of you it is... They still headed. have those noble laureates. Yes. Ask them to really let them go. And I'm sure <laughs> other schools will take them if they don't like the finance world. <laughs> so I knew that I'm competing with a much smaller pool. And that, that was evident here. We had a smaller denominator in terms of consulting recruitment and a very similar numerator in terms of the number of students who made it to consulting for both the schools. And I had this comparison for the last year and the year before that as well. So I knew short term... So, so, but 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 who taught you all of this stuff to really make these comparisons there? How I mean, people said that it's a very tough year for recruiting. Um, 
and i think these were some of the nuances then i had to start figuring it out myself oh, but how what i mean people said that yes. right uh but i am also very sure that your seniors at ross they still have are doing something i'm they probably had a harder time finding a job but most of them have a job right now right yes they do they they probably struggled more than their seniors did yes that's true. what i understand you know most people have a job now everyone so, has a job i think it, you will most likely make it you got that fully yeah, right so but then, but what kind of forced you to to kind of build that framework to really and it's the correct framework okay so but but I, I, and and who taught you to build that framework to really say okay booth from booth people the way similar class sizes yes. people recruit in these other areas a lot more i know text going bust so so i will be competing with more people at kellogg versus at booth so which means the fact that I'm, even though i don't want to go into venture capital or private equity i yeah. i want to go into consulting and and so it'll be much i'll be much better off going into consulting from booth versus i would say a lot of things were with the information that's available we had excels of what people aspire again the data was there but not yes. everyone would do it okay then let's come back to the other one here yes you 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 had round one kellogg right you yes. had set your mind on kellogg you probably had paid some money as well if you know yes. you were, right so so what did you do first of all to get into booth that's let's first do that and i'm going to ask the next question so you said you throughout the you were writing them emails right oh, so Multiple what was times. it i think my email structure was always two to three aspects the first was me finding ways through which i can elevate my profile a little further it could be simple things like doing a change management maybe a project at bcg right Got it. and maybe some other changes that i would have made but all these changes that i was making was targeting to one clear theory which was me wanting to make some sort of a contribution at both right so i would say that i can contribute in xyz class because i have learned these three aspects which are new into my profile xyz so, is a class at, at both second year first year or so i exactly so if if for example it's a pricing strategy class yes. right i have done a new project on pricing strategy and this is what experience that i can bring into that class these are and, the insights that i have and blah blah blah, blah. exactly right and and these are real world problems even now because that's a case that we worked on recently so that's one example um maybe change management is an, another example that i gave because everyone's trying to move into digital transformation or ai revolution right that change transformation is still or org behavior these are very relevant changes even very very much right now so these are things that i bought in that was my first part of the essay the other was always about me showing enthusiasm towards booth which was interacting with more students finding out more things about booth um and that's why when you asked me about kellogg versus booth i had a lot a lot more clear idea as to why i want booth because i had very subtle nuances which i learned from some of the seniors at booth got it now i wanted to ask this other question which is that um, uh you'd gotten into kellogg and all of these wonderful schools a lot of people would give up and say i'm Kellogg is where I wanted. Gotten into Kellogg, Booth wait listed me. They would not actually have two other questions, but let me ask this question as well. So, so they would not really pursue Booth. What motivated you to to keep on pursuing Booth? There were one or two other aspects of the experience which I thought Booth might provide. First one is you've heard of this flexibility, mm -hmm. right? And flexibility isn't just in terms of the curriculum, but what that eventually leads to, which is me meeting a lot more people i'll give you an example i think a lot of other schools focus on a very cohort system which means you're starting with that 60s 70s mm -hmm. students for the first two or three quarters it differs for every school of course yeah. right in both the very first class you take is with a bunch of second years um oh, wow. who have selected that's very class. valuable because you you those are wounded warriors in oh, yes. <laughs> yes 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 so yeah. what that leads to is two things one you meet a lot more people mm -hmm. right the booth helps you meet a wider breadth of people if that makes sense but it doesn't really help you get to the depth of relations mm -hmm. which is what some of the other schools provide but i thought this is something that i'm really bad at meeting more people and that's something i need to change if i want to get into consulting and so i thought let me put myself out of the comfort zone and that's where booth might have given or forced me to imbibe that sort of a value mm -hmm. and the second thing here was i mean all those things that i mentioned about 
the differences in the classes that you can take. The very first class I was taking was with a bunch of second years. I had a mentor in that very first class who has stayed as a mentor for me throughout the first year of recruiting. And I don't know if a lot of other school students can actually say the same phrase. Got it. Got it. That's it. Now, I want to just ask this other question. We, we're going to go back to you talking about the change management pricing strategy. Yes. Right. You're working at BCG as a data, a senior data analyst. You know, most people say, I cannot take a project. I don't have the flexibility to take on a project and produce results. How is it that you took on these projects? Or, I mean, they were, were they voluntarily that you took them on? Was there something lying around and said, let me just do this analysis and talk about it? Or was this a part of your regular job? You know, it's a, it's a very cliche term we use. It's the people. And I'll use it one more time without any hesitation. Mm -hmm. Being a part of some of these organizations ensures mm -hmm. that you're already working with the best, right? I have post MBA students, Stella, Stanford, Harvard degrees. Um, people who are coming with a very strong values and people mindset to help you through this. So I was very comfortable jumping into any new problem because I knew that my partner is super comfortable working with me and I know he'll help me out if I'm drowning at any instance. So this is where the people aspect comes in. It gave me a lot more flexibility mm -hmm. to just play around and take all the risks that I could actually take. And I enjoyed doing that. It it really helped. No, but, no, I still you still haven't answered the question. I want. When you say take all of these risks, how did these projects even come to you? Is my question. Did you have a choice to say I now want to do a pricing analysis or I now want to do a change management? You did you have that choice? Well, throughout my time at BCG, I had just two managers, and I said this because they kept working with me repeatedly, and all of this was because all those things I said earlier, right? They were comfortable. Mm -hmm. They were comfortable with giving me these newer projects and help me helping me take these risks. And to be very honest, they knew very much what I'm trying to do here and what I want to get to. And so they wanted to add a lot more color as well. And that's why I've got all these opportunities. So a lot of it is built on the initial aspect that I had to. You, the fact that you built trust with them. Yes, exactly. The accountability aspect. And once you have created that, then why not? So do you think they also benefited from the fact that you were taking on these new things? Well, I hope they did. <laughs> yep. I think I think for I've sure. got to ask them then. Yes. <laughs> and I hope the answer remains the same as well. I, I'm sure they did. Otherwise, I mean, as someone who's leading people within EG Math, uh, I, I also love the fact that when people say, I want to take this challenge on, and, yeah. and, and if I believe they're capable, I'd give it to them. And it takes a load off my chest, by the way. And, um, and, and, and so uh, uh, the sectional mocks that we just released yesterday was something that you know, our tech team and our strategy team did that. I, I had very little contribution to it. It was a need that we knew of, but they all did it together. It took a load off me. A couple of people said, we are going to do that. Yes. And 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 so absolutely, yes. It's a big need, by the way. I used to create these mocks by, you know, putting these questions together because of the recommendations you had. But yes, it's a big need. So well done. <laughs> well, thank you for that. Um, just, yeah. So we have, we don't have a whole lot of time. I want to just ask this. So, what did you do during the first year to get this internship? And then I want to ask, what did you do during the internship to get this job? First part, it's slightly easier because from a process perspective, everything is laid out to you. And I think this happens across B schools, yeah. consulting or even investment banking is a very organic process. Companies come in, they will tell you, they here is the consulting clubs. They tell you exactly how you're supposed to interact with them. What are the sorts of emails that you write? How do you convert that first it's a term we use crop circles, which is basically one company representative, six of you standing around him and having a conversation. How do you convert that conversation into a one-on-one mm -hmm. coffee chat, right? And since US is still a very networking-based economy, you need to ensure that they want to work with you as much as you want to work with them. It, and it should be, right? Time. That way. I mean, yes. honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way anywhere else. A hundred percent again, Rajas. And that's where this coffee chat is very essential, right? And you keep doing it. Ask them to connect you with more people. You have created a huge sort of, well, I would say advocators for yourself, right? Eventually to get an interview invite. And then it comes down to that case prep, which is again, something which the consulting clubs across schools help you get, get through as so, well. So, so can, I understand the coffee charts. I understand you knowing many more people. You talked about the getting the interview invite. Yes. And how does, there's something missing between the coffee charts and the interview invite. Tell me what, what goes on between these two things. I mean, it's you've got to apply, right? 
It's a great question. I mean, yes. And I would say a lot of it is the way you're doing these coffee chats alone. And even I, I think undervalued the importance of the word coffee chat or this networking aspect. Two things. One is obviously the content that you're delivering within that coffee chat, which is talking about their work, a lot of personal aspects as well, just to bring out color in your profile as well. But beyond that, how do you stay in touch with this person? Because if I've had this coffee chat with them in the month of September or October and my interviews in December, <laughs> how do I ensure they, they even remember me? That's true. That the, that others are also aspect. doing that. Yes. And that's a very key aspect. Reaching out to them. You know, for example, if someone's told me that they are having a client presentation three weeks from now for which they're preparing, can I actually remember that and note that down and three weeks later reach out to them asking about that client presentation? These are very small things. And this oh, kind of important things too. Absolutely. Thanksgiving break is coming in. Why not email to them about that very aspect itself, wishing their family, right? New Year's is coming in, do the same thing. So small, tiny aspects. And this is where organization helps. Organizing your work, organizing these chats that you've had, remembering what you have spoken about to them. So I, I want to just go from just the strategic piece to it, to the tactical aspect. Which tools did you use to make sure you didn't forget this? Excel. <laughs> Very pure simple. Excel. Your Excel. Okay. I mean, truly analyzing a data analyst background and <laughs> just saying, okay, reminder, I'm going to open this up and blah, 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 blah. Yes. Okay. That, that's, that's, that's great. Okay. Now let's go to the internship. You get the internship. You're there for three months. How long did the job offer take to come and how, what did you do during those three months to convert that internship to an offer? I think this is across all companies. Now, the job offer comes on the last day. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I, I had no idea. Okay. Yes. Unfortunately, it comes on the last day, which means that for the two and a half, three months, you're all in, right? Yes. And it was for me by far the most challenging experience so far. I definitely saw that there was a skill gap between what I possessed and what they even expected at a bare minimum. But this is where these organizations are really professional about things. They do not come to you two and a half months later saying, please go home, you're not getting an offer. But they have these very weekly feedback sessions, check-ins, mentors, etc. that ensure that you are on the path and not steering away from it. So very first example was me producing some sort of a storyline for the client. Mm. The first work that I did, my, my partner comes to me and says, you might want to increase the ambition of your work a little bit. And that really stinked quite a bit because I put in a lot of effort for that. But that was the reality. Mm. And then they'll tell you what that difference in ambition actually is mm. and posing it together. Right. The first, and this is one thing which I want to say, a lot of us, or maybe me coming from a tech background, the way I was used to working is I have a data in front of me. I'm going to analyze data, put it on the story that I want to carve, etc. Mm -hmm. Consulting works the other way around, right? It's an answer first approach. So you yeah, create the hypothesis totally. first, analyze those results, and then match that hypothesis. If it doesn't, you turn your hypothesis upside down. And that's not something I was comfortable with because I've worked five years in a different world. That's the pre-thinking approach. You start from the conclusion and really find the gap, yes. right? And this is where I would say Gmail is very relevant <laughs> for your for your consulting endeavors as well. That was one. One other critical feedback that I would always receive is verbal communications uh, or written communications. You know, there is there's always scope for you to improve on that. Um, the way you structured uh, unstructured data and explain it to a client who probably isn't as versed in it mm -hmm. as effectively as possible is is a very big challenge. And I think once again. The verbal component of Gmail has something to do with it, uh, especially in the written comms aspect a little bit as well. Yes. Um, and written comms is easy to take in, right? I mean, you have ChatGPT to help you create sentences a little better, but yes, yes, verbal yes. is something that I still struggle with, as you can see right now in the conversation. So that's something that I want to improve on. And that's a feedback that I regularly got, worked on it, mm. hopefully fix it a little bit better. And that's where I got the return off. So... And, and this is very, very valuable, uh, what you really said. And these are, I mean... Uh, very honest confessions because uh, uh, you know you've already said this is where I this is how I got in this is where I lacked these are the areas I needed to improve on this is the kind of feedback I got and and you worked really hard towards doing that and and hopefully you've imp you improved enough that you got the offer and you said there's still had room for me to improve in those okay. areas and and that's 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 really um, that's commendable of you um, uh, over there so now that you. So, and which is very, very different from, you know, when you think about consulting, a lot of us look at these, these beautiful presentations that which, which 
I mean, this just seemed wonderful, but it's way more about the story than just the representation. The representation comes after the story is formed is what you're telling me. First form the story, then look at what you have. And then, you know, the gap is where the representation comes in there. So you're going to go back, start yes. with the fall semester. Um, you have the job. You um, actually have still have a year to go. What are you going to focus on? Two things come to my mind. I keep mm. speaking in twos, you know. <laughs> two things come to my mind. The first is the leadership aspect itself. Mm. I think I have it in me to become a very decent consultant, but a very, very bad <laughs> manager right now. Mm. Um, and this is where I think I can polish it a little further in my second year by ensuring that my sec my first years, the incoming students get these offers in the first place. I am I think I know a little bit more than them on these very aspects and they'll get there in two months when I explain it to them. So this is where the leadership aspect hopefully polishes itself a little further. The second aspect is a feedback which I continuously got, which is verbal communications, um, maybe getting into public speaking a little bit more or persuasions, etc. Now, if you have noticed in these two aspects, not for once have I mentioned finance or marketing, etc. Agreed, agreed. <laughs> and there's a reason for that. Um, again, one of my seniors I spoke to had told me that we are in an advent of chat GPT. Um, these knowledges are actually very well available outside. Yes. So take courses that change your worldview because mm -hmm. I can very well Google or search on chat GPT exactly the terms I want to find the answers to. And yeah. it'll give me a better answer than what I'm already aware of. Absolutely. So softer skills. And this is something I used to make fun of uh, before I got into the MBA. But I think I see the value in it right now. But But... Honestly, even when you're saying them as soft skills in which they are, without a concrete story and an ability to present that story, those soft skills are not as, as useful. But but the fact is you you already possess those those hard strategic thinking mindset pieces. It's more about making sure that others also get the same vision that you want to communicate. Now I want to ask this. I mean, um and again, I'm not looking for a firm number, but you you would have spent what, one to two crores for your MBA? Yes, around. See, this is where you will make me sweat quite a bit, but it's around to fifty thousand dollars. Is what I'm thinking. Two hundred fifty k. Yeah, that's two crores. Yeah, yes. two crores, two point one five to to be more precise. Um, yes. and and if you were to to kind of take this look back, take a look back at you know year back, where um, and I'm sure you would burn something back with the internship. Those salaries are the internship. Yes. Uh, that that the stipend's pretty good, but but. You know, you've had a year, right? You have a job offer, I understand. But in terms of the learning that you've had in that year, you've spent about 120 grand to get that learning. What would you say is the value of that learning for you? I mean, how as a person, Shubham, how much have you grown during this year? And and throughout this process of preparing for the GMAT, doing yes. those application essays, going through that first year grind, getting this feedback from, from, from BCG, I mean, as a human being, when you were to really say, on one hand, you'd see that loan that you're holding. On the other hand, you say, I'm a very different individual. How would you weigh these two things? I, the way I look at it, you know, first 27 years of my life versus that one year at MBA, yeah. what has changed? Two things once again. First one, now I see the value of what you can actually achieve in 24 hours in a day. Uh, the value of time is a little bit more in my life right now. So I'm having this chat with you right now and I'm going to pursue eight other tasks versus lazing in my bed, which is what I was doing on every weekend <laughs> before I did my MBA. And it's a very small thing. I know mm. it's not something that I push myself to do. But it adds up. It's, it's a small thing on that day, but it adds up over a period of time. And again, you know, it's not something like I just said, I'm not forcing myself to do it. It's just a habit that's created for the last one year. The second thing which I feel is very critical for me is I disliked speaking to people. I disliked meeting people altogether. I was very comfortable closing my door and maybe staring at a wall. Mm. That's something that's changed quite significantly. And the reason I say this is not just because of me having more friends, but how much more I've learned from their own experiences. Mm. One simple example, I was speaking to somebody from Deloitte. He was sharing me his experiences on M&A strategy mm. and how change transformation actually works. And I could actually implement that on my BCG case very recently in some shape or form. So Small things that actually add up to a very, very huge value, isn't it? So it does, it so, does, yes. There you go. Okay. So yeah. 
Well, thank Shubham. That was all. It was phenomenal talking to you. It's it's it's. I've I've spoken to a lot of students who just gotten in, but um, very few have gotten in after um, after the first year or so. But it was it was really good talking to you. Um, I think I I can honestly see as an individual how much you've grown. and um, and 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 how confident you become i'm sure you weren't as confident uh, about a year and a half back yeah. uh, when you had that 680 score as as you are now but but and i can really see the transformation in you so so kudos to you good luck and and do come over um, when you are in bangalore next absolutely raja okay there are two things i want to say before going away first one i've said this before the 760 was the pivotal in helping me shape this right mm-hmm. that was by far the toughest phase that i've had to go through not getting into b school not getting into bcg and not converting the offer mm. that 760 was a toughest journey and thanks to egmat for helping me and the second thing is i think you're all doing a great job because i know the structure of egmat changed and i still see success stories coming out so well done to you and your team so oh, far thank you it's been a lot of work um i know uh, i but but it's honestly worth it yesterday i was there at the mba tour i saw students come in um there are few who were really really well prepared there are others who actually didn't have any idea and it was really i mean after 10 years also it's it's rewarding to 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 really guide them and <laughs> yes, uh, and and with tech moving the way it is with ai uh, offering what it can um i i can really see so i don't know if you saw my post some time back our vision was to be just as good as a private tutor about 3 years ago now i think with um, with by integrating ai we can be 2 to 3x better than a private tutor in about 6 months so uh, so that i mean i can honestly see that happening we're already doing a bunch of things with it so super excited about um uh, about each mad and then the other things that we'll do with 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 learning well done raj thank you so much for having thank me you. again thank you shubham for taking the time out i know you're on vacation and um, say congratulations to your parents everyone in your family okay bye bye and have a wonderful day bye